speaking with the microphone on mute. So let's start this again. Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hi, how's everyone doing? Um, I was now I checked my input sound and I can see that the mic now is capturing. Ha. Jokes on me. It has been a while. <laughs> How's everyone doing? What? How was your week? What were the wins? What did you work on? What did you study? You know, let me know. I'm very curious. So today's Friday. It has been a while. I'm a little bit tired. I went to a meetup yesterday. I hosted a meetup, to be honest. Um, so one of the things that I like to do in my developer advocate, you know, role here, Octa, uh, is to host community meetups at the office. You know, we have some pizza talk a little bit about something related to code and tech. So yesterday we had Toronto JS uh, community at the office and we were talking about accessibility and it was like super fun. I loved it. Um, had a lot of great conversations, met a lot of new people. I was very excited. And But I'm a little bit tired. That means <laughs> that I'm a little bit tired today. Um, but anyways, I'm happy. I'm very happy because today I'm going back to work on my little IoT device, the Badger 2040W, and a little bit of MicroPython, and go back to device authorization flow, which I realized now, I thought it was like maybe a month ago that I had messed around with the Badger a little bit to get it working, to do the thing that I wanted to do. And actually, I was just double checking and I'm going to show it to you. It was not <laughs> one month ago. It was actually three months ago. <laughs> it, it has been a long time. So bear with me because, you know, my memory is already bad enough when I look at things from last week. Imagine when looking at things from three months ago. So we're probably going to review the code that we did together three months ago, I remember that it was not working and we need to figure out why. But the good side is, uh, I work with a person that also is working with the Badger and was using the Badger exactly to do what I wanted it to do. So we are going to take a look at that code as well in case we can figure out what's going wrong with the code that I have. Um, I hope that will be fun. I hope we can figure it out. I'm very hopeful and fingers crossed everything will work out. But you know, if it doesn't, we'll be here next week and we'll try again. Uh, so this week, uh, one of the good news that I received was that my tutorial for Python US, which was about device authorization flow with the Badger, was approved. And I'm so excited that it, it got through. Uh, I saw a lot of people had the activities declined. Uh, you know, Python US is one of the biggest events for Python, for the Python community in general. Um, and it is very hard to get an activity in. I submitted four, two talks and two tutorials. Um, and in the end, only one got through, which was my tutorial. But uh, what happens is I might not be able to join PyCon this year, you know, for a lot of reasons. Uh, but I'm very excited for that. And I decided even though I'm not going to PyCon, I'm going to be releasing the content of the tutorial online for people to check out and have fun, especially if they already have a badger. And I might even be hosting some of uh, workshops and tutorials in person he, here at the office. So you might even catch a chance to do it live with me. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, let's see how you know the year goes. Uh, fingers crossed we can get that to, to, to happen. Uh, I would love to know that if you would come and join to one of these events, um, if I did it in person. Um, at a meetup near you. <laughs> uh, but anyways, my idea is to log in using the device authorization flow through the Badger, update some information from the user from there, and then show that on a web app uh, via the normal login, logout, authorization, authentication flow. So enough talking, let's get to coding. Uh, I was actually checking uh, when the last live stream we did on the Badger was, and it was three months ago. And how do I know this? Because I exported it to YouTube and YouTube told me three months ago. Anyways, uh, 
coat 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 let's see if i got yes so here this is my youtube channel where i support all the live streams that i do coding you know and so i was looking at here and like oh look at that three months ago that was a long time i even had like the old branding in here oh god anyways three months ago was a long time so for those who don't know what the badger is ah let me show it to you i guess context is important so i have a few of few badgers here to be honest and i'm going to pick one up that is not connected to my computer apologize for the noise in advance and so this one here i lent it to evan for dev day we used as part of the experience at dev day but basically this is an unique device it is a little board this is the Badger 2040, not the 2040W, so it doesn't have Wi-Fi wi -Fi capability, so you cannot connect to the internet. Uh, this is the back of it. I put in a little, um, what is the name of this in English? Velcro, I think. Um, that, so I can stick the battery in the back if I want to, but as you can tell, there is no battery here right now. And uh, the, the, the display still shows a message, which is great, especially if you're using this to show your name or a QR code that I'm hiding here as of now, because you know, um, I think it's deactivated, but I don't want people to go try scan it and not go anywhere. And you can even set, have a QR code in there so that you can link to a website that you want to show people instead of like spelling out the website, which for me is always a challenge. Uh, you can have the QR code in there. Hi, Rizel. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. How are you doing? So, oh, this is the first comment that I get from Max that actually gets through my chat from Restream. So I'm very excited. Thanks for, for chatting. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate you being here. Um, and so the one that I have is the Badger 2040W, and that's the one that I'm going to be using. For those that, you know, of the first time joining one of the badges live streams that I do, um, I have a lab on hosted on the Out Zero Developer Center that teaches how the badge works. Uh, let's go back to the view, and so this is it. I'm going to drop that in chat, and I guess the easiest way for me to do this is to paste it here and then put it somewhere else in, uh, as well i guess i can put it on the twitch the x slash twitter um comments later but basically within the developer out zero developer center uh with from out zero we have a bunch of resources on how to use out zero uh, Rizal, if you're still there, let me know if the music is too loud. I had people tell me that the music was too loud the last time I streamed, and I want to make sure that the music is in an okay level. But uh, we have the developer center from Out Zero that has a bunch of resources like labs, guides, and code samples. One of the labs that we did was the Badger 2040W. And it was basically to teach anybody, no matter what their level of programming was, how to work with a badge. Um, it's not too loud, but okay, I'm going to make it a little bit lower. Let's see. Hopefully this will be better and not too low. Uh, but anyways, uh, so we did this lab and the idea would be to walk people through like, you know, one-on-one uh, step on how to get your badger set up. For me, uh, my experience with these devices was, was very limited until I started working with the badgers. Um, and I have maybe three different different devices uh, from Pymaroni uh, with me right now, maybe four. Yeah, I think it's four. Um, and I realized this other people might have the same questions and doubts that I had when I first started. So we created this. It has like a step-by-step -step guide to show people how to get started with the thing. For example, you need an IDE that can talk to the badge. And for that, we use Tony. We're going to see Tony in a little bit. Um, and it has like special capabilities to connect and identify the badge and allow you to code within the badge. 
And then we have like the setup. We even provided like a GitHub repo that you can use to get the code ready in case like you don't know much Python and you want to play around with it anyways and start your journey with Python or MicroPython, to be honest, because the Badger uses MicroPython. And it shows you like step by step how to download Tony, how to get things uh, set up. And even shows like the most important like buttons and connectors that you have in the back of the, the, the Badger. And walks you through how to personalize. So my idea was we have these little characters that we use for this demo that we made specially for this. And I wanted to be able to log in with my user through the badge, although the badge does not have a keyboard. Keep that in mind, very important detail. Through the badge, choose my character, and then since I log in, the badge would be able to grab the information of which character I'm going to use and set that as the avatar for my user profile in my application. And this application would have not only the ability to connect to a device like this, but at the same time, a web page that you can go in and see like your ID token and your user profile picture. So today my focus is to get the login through the badge to work. And I should probably show you the badge as well. And let's change the view. So, you know, still down here and up here, you can see the badge. So right now I'm showing something that I was running earlier today. It's just an output from a, a script that grabs a JSON web token uh, from uh, Alt0. And this was me trying to figure out how to get access tokens from Alt0 through the badge, which kind of works. And it's part of the process that we're going to need to use for the device flow anyways. Uh, so that was one experiment and now we can go back to the device flow. So this is Tony. I hope the font size is good. If not, let me know. I can increase it and zoom in a little bit. Oh, I forgot to grab some water. I might grab some later. Uh, this was the last bit of it. And just a quick um, walk around on this interface. So we have three panes. On the left, we have the files. So on the left, on the top, you have my computer files. On the bottom, you have the files within the badge. Uh, I can show you like this is script. So for example, inside of the examples folder it has all the scripts and I can even show a different one. Like for example, this one is the badge script that is going to show my information on the badge. And it, once it updates, you can see there the my information and the out zero by octa and the logo and whatnot. But the one that I was running before was the JWT one that I also have in here. So each one of these scripts is an option in the menu on the badge. We can navigate through the badge. I'm not going to do that now because I'm more focused on trying to get it to work. And I have one in here as well called uh, device flow, which is this one that is open already. And it's going to read, read this configuration file that has the information from my out zero, um, tenant and the application in there. Uh, and it's going to use that. I'm not going to show that configuration file because it has like secrets and whatnot. And I don't want my secrets out there, uh, basically. Um, but anyways, uh, oh, hi, Rafael. So yeah, this is a very cool device. I actually have a few in stock. Uh, that we use for events when I go to Python and Python events that I might want to do a demo or give away some. I have a few of them with me, but it's really cool. And it is a very, like, a very low learning curve. And so if you're starting with IoT and you want to try something and you already know Python, uh, the steps are very, almost very easy, I would say. Um, although I do not like to underestimate uh, our ability to find something not easy, at least for me, uh, that happens a lot. Uh, but uh, it is very friendly as a device for like a person that is beginning with this type of devices. Um, I always wanted to be a person that codes like hardware a little bit. And, but I never got into the whole like Arduino phase of things, you know, connecting like LEDs and whatnot. Uh, so this kind of scratches the each of hardware for me in a very like friendly way. And I kind of love it. 
uh, shout out to the Pomeroni folks that, you know, have this device and the little kids and it works really well. Anyways, let's go. So I need to review this code because I don't remember what I did, but basically I think this part is using the configuration and reading it, creating a variable so that I can use that as part of my configuration and each variable adds information to here. So we have domain client ID, the algorithms, this is used for the JSON web token uh, verification. Uh, we are using RS256, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to, for the algorithm here, because that's the one that we use at R0 in most cases, unless you changed your configuration. And I think this is, this, this part is good, I think because it's just reading the configuration file. And then we do the login part where we send the information through out, for out zero to out zero uh, via a request. And I'm using you requests, which is the MicroPython library inside of this badge to do requests. It works similarly to request, the normal Python requests library, uh, but it's a little bit different. And my guess, oh, my guess why things are going wrong is because the way that you request views the request does not necessarily work as ex we expect it to. It might, it might view the, the, the request a little bit different. And I had to debug this, but I didn't have, I guess I didn't have time uh, because other things came into priority uh, for me. But basically you send the client ID, the scope you wanna use, uh, to the out zero on this OAuth device code endpoint, and you pass along the this as a JSON uh, in the body of the request. I guess since this is data, I'm assuming this is the body. And if everything goes well, you're going to get information back from out zero. I guess I can show you what that looks like in a case that works, because one. My colleague at Out0, also a Pythonista, also works with JavaScript, and we do a lot of our Python demos together. Either he does a demo and I review the code or vice versa. And what Juan did uh, was to write a blog post on a protected CLI with Out0. Protected CLI. And what happens... This is, I should probably do the blog directly, right? Side on zero.com slash blog protect CLI Python on zero. Blog. Yes, there we go. I never remember the full name of the article, so I have to Google it. Sorry. Uh, nope. In securing a Python CLI application. So, what happens is whenever you use device flow is when you have some sort of input constraint. So for CLIs, device flow can be really useful as well because it allows you to continue the logging process through a web browser somewhere else. Oh, hi, Simon. Nice to see you here. And wait, <laughs> uh, so Jairo is actually my husband. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> um, sorry, I was trying to scroll up my fifty. Yeah. Um, nice to see you here, Simon. Thanks for joining again. So, anyways, going back to the, the what I was saying that I got totally distra distracted. Uh, so you can use the device authorization flow to uh allow people to actually perform actions in a CLI, uh, as long as they have the right permissions and access and whatnot. So, uh, Juan wrote this blog post and I'm going to drop that in chat for, in case y'all want to check it out as well. Um, and I, I'm sorry for the ones watching on LinkedIn and Twitter. I seem to have problems to post there. So I need to get that figured out for next live stream. Uh, bear with me. Anyways, but it, this does almost kind of the same thing that I want to do. It's... Uh, explain how device flow works, which I kind of already know. So imagine, for example, a TV, uh, you want to log into one application on your smart TV or also one. You don't want to go like with your con control, remote control, like right, right, right. Yes, this is the letter that I want and type in like this because it's a very poor experience. 
Um, so what the app can do is provide you with a link for you to continue the login process through the link or QR code you can scan. Uh, and my idea would be doing the same with the uh, Badger because the Badger doesn't have a keyboard that you can type. So your input uh, is very limited. So what you can do there, like even showing a keyboard here, it would be like impossible. Not impossible, I'm not going to say impossible because you probably can program it to happen, but very hard to do. And also like typing would be hard to do as well. So the device flow allows you, device authorization flow allows you to continue the login on these devices that have like an input constrained situation uh, through a secondary device like your phone or a computer if you have that available. Uh, so that you can have a browser for to you to put your login information, like your username, uh, passwords, if you use passwords, I don't like passwords, but you know, I try not to use it and those kind of things. And then your application will be logged in on that other device, the first device, like a TV or in this case, the better. But anyways, so for the CLI it kind of works the same way because, uh, Normally, you would not have a browser you know, on your terminal to input that information. You might also not want to do uh, add that information within the CLI to actually make the login. So one way that you can do uh, provide that feature of logging in to your CLI is to do using device authorization flow. And then you get a link back that you can log in through your browser. So one example of um, service that does that is the Heroku CLI. Whenever you log in without using the interactive, you know, flag there is going to give you a link for you to continue logging in with your web browser. So the idea is to do the same kind of thing. Um, give the link or the QR code within the badge so that we can log in through the phone. Anyway, so that part I did, which was the configuration for, I think I did, right? Did I do it? Hmm. Good question. Let me double check that. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a second because, oh, what is that? Let me... How can I remove this? I'm going to pause this just for a second because I don't want to type my password, well, log in and show things that I do not want to show. Um, so let me log into my Alt Zero account here real quick. And continue. Yes. Verify my identity, my fingerprint. Boom. And. I love when you ask us for my fingerprint instead of like me having to type stuff. So much better experience. <laughs> uh, applications. Okay, got it. Oh, let me share my screen again. Okay, here we are. So this is my Out Zero uh, dashboard. Um, so I have a bunch of applications, as you can see. You know, like I was testing password last the other day. Uh, I have a Fast API web app and a Flask one because. I've been developing a lot of simple applications with this too. And I have the budget device out here. Um, I should probably put out C so that is, you know, authorization, but anyways, it works. So if I come in here, let's see if I configured everything I needed to configure. Oh, save changes, common return. Interesting. I also I love this change that the folks that take care of the dashboard did. Now we can save changes from here instead of like having to scroll all the way down, which is great uh, because I'm very prone to forgetting to save the changes and then like nothing's working and I don't know why and that's why. Okay, let's look at this. So I have a native one. That's the same one that I have in there. Uh, settings, advanced settings, expand. Where's my advanced settings? Application, application your eyes. I don't think it's here. I'm in the wrong tab, I think. Oh, here. <laughs> All right. Okay. 
OAuth tab, make sure I see conformity is on and they should be on by default if you just created that application. OAuth. Is it on? Is it on? Great. Uh, what is the other one? Grant types. And I need to have device code, right? Yes. Grant types, device code, it's checked. Implicit, blah, 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 blah. Implicit authorization refresh and device code. Okay. So got it. That's done. And save changes. I didn't change anything, so I don't need to save changes, but just in case. Done. Might take 30 seconds to apply your changes. Fine. <laughs> okay. Request device code. Request tokens. Receive tokens. Request device code. During this step, you use Out0 API to initiate the Out device authorization flow and provide us with the setup URL and user code needed to authenticate and validate the device. So you have to get the data from the Out0 dashboard to call the required API. So let's go get them and set them as Python variables like this. I already did this. We already know that. We are reading from that text file. Uh, to capture the Out0 domain and client ID, I already did this as well. So the domain client ID comes from the out zero application dashboard. That's the one that we were just in. And if you scroll up all the way up, those are here. This is the information. Please copy and paste. So domain client ID, I already have that. Create a new login function with our code. Oh, so I did exactly this post. Where is my, oh. Here. Uh, the only difference is I'm using a different library to make the request. So you request post and the OAuth device code, which is the endpoint here. Okay. Which the domain and device payload. And the only difference here is that I need to use this. I think I need to use this um to actually create this request and i think that's the step that is not working let's try to run this yeah so i sent if okay something happened so here we see client id the algorithms and the domain which is my domain cool and the client id and the scope so what what is the difference here? What is printing? So this is printing the first dictionary that I did, which is that one. This other one is coming from where? This error generating. There's another print somewhere here. That's fine, print. Oh dear. So that's one. And that's the error. And this is when everything works, which it did not. Okay. Oh. Where is find? Okay, three, this other one. So this is the request data. Okay, got it. So I think this is the first one. And I'm going to comment this out and run this again just cuz yes so one less awesome and we got an error because it did not work fully oh hi oh my god I, I just forgot for the chat a little bit let me check in chat hi uh so shout out to young codes uh we we tend to raid each other from time to time um happy friday yes i'm hoping to i'm hoping that today we can get this script to work and do what it needs to do uh fingers crossed uh you know you never know when these things so part of the job that I, my job is to actually figure out this kind of thing so that i can show to people how they work and we are doing the figuring out part <laughs> So I'm working on, um, what is the name? Device authorization flow. So uh, 
long story short is imagine you have a like a smart TV and you want to connect plug into your profile on one application on the TV something like to watch a stream or whatever uh, instead of you typing your username and password to like the keyboard on the TV because that's very annoying you know go right 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 left 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 up this is the letter that I want and then go all through all of them again uh, for the other letters you have what we know what is known as device authorization flow so the app can show you a link or a QR code for you to scan so that you can continue your login instead of using the TV keyboard on your phone or on your computer you just need to scan the QR code or access that link um, so we are trying to do the same thing with the badger and what happened okay I think I clicked something that I shouldn't the badger which is up here and um, because the badger which is this device this little device here has no keyboard and I want to log in here and grab information from the Badger to update the information from my user. So to do that, I need to use device authorization flow um, because I want to have a link that shows up here and I continue my login through my phone um, by either accessing the link or if I can manage to generate a QR code, scan the QR code. So that's the idea. Does that make sense? If it is, if I rambled on, let me know. I can explain again. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So same thing. So usually, I guess the best example is think of um, Netflix or you know, whatever. Logging into Amazon, uh, f like the Fire Stick thing. So same idea. You know. Uh, it is a better user experience than it is to try and type through your TV with the virtual keyboard because that's some, I find it very annoying and I think most people would agree. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so I'm trying to get that to work and some, something is wrong, something's not working. But I know that if I do the request through my terminal, uh, it actually works. So we need to figure out if the problem is this library or the way that I'm, building the request I think is the way that the library is building the request because I did try to do this in two different ways but for example I know for a fact I can get an access token from out zero um, from another script that I have so I need to find my way through the madness that it is the chaotic madness that it is my list of scripts for example so this other one does kind of the same process, but instead of using the code endpoint, it, it uses the token endpoint. But it uses the same library and the same way of reading the configuration. Um, so we might be missing either information that it needs. It also uses UJSON and dumps to pass along the data. So we need to try to find out what is going on here. So there are two ways that I can do this. I can either run the script again and it's going to give an error or I can try to code through the shell. And I think that's what I'm going to do. You will request, I can co probably copy this. Yes. And I'm going to, can I copy this whole thing? Okay. And I need to call this one. And my endpoint, the login endpoint is here. So let's see if I can use this variable there because I'm defining this inside of the function and not outside and this might be one of the reasons why things are not working. Client ID is there. Okay, great. So we can double check whether or not... Oh whether or not this is my client ID by looking at my application details. Yeah, it looks like the same, right? SMLQ, SMLQ, yep. 
I or H Y. Yep, yep, yep. Same thing. Cool. So even though I I did not return this variable, it is available and we're going to use it. Let's try to run this request now. Device code payload isn't defined. Oh yeah, I did not do this. <laughs> Sorry. And just looking at chat, make sure that I didn't miss anything. So, are you streaming today? By the way, I never know. Um, I think I missed your notifications because I'm streaming as well. Cool. So this is a response object. Fine. What is the status code? Probably something different than 200 because of, yes, poetry. Hmm. Can I get, what can I get from this thing here? Oh no, device code payload. So this is the thing that I did and the response text. Unauthorized unknown client. What do you mean, dude? Unauthorized or unknown client? Yes, okay. It is unauthorized. All right. Mm hmm. So the endpoint is right. What does this look like? Client ID. Do I need anything else in the request? Is that is that why? Client ID and scope. So no, I shouldn't need anything else. So if something is different than 200, blah, blah, blah. All right. We get a JSON object response among other properties contains, blah, blah, blah. Let's open this just to take a look. So I should be able to make a simple request and get something in return. Your client ID and scope. Maybe it's missing an audience. Maybe that's why. Do I need to pass the audience? That's a good question, isn't it? Can I see? There was a CURL example here somewhere, wasn't it? Oh, I gotcha. So that's why uh, we never cross paths like you in my stream. It's either one or the other. It's like, uh, yeah, and now it makes sense. I hope everything is all right. And that's why you laid like, nothing like to, you know. So this is the other part where you make sure that, so after you log in, like you get that the code and you log in, you need to keep like a request happening to the API so that you can make sure that the login happened. So you will have to ping the API from time to time. So I haven't done that part yet because I can't, I can't even get the code and the URI to, you know, get things do going. Um, Expires, access token. So that part I know how to do. What is this URL example? What did I get that the other time? Was this inside the, in here? Don't remember anymore. Oh, I guess I need to use the other application, right? Yes. Let's see. API Explorer, APIs. Not this one. What would do? How did I get that thing the other time? I don't remember anymore. It has been too long. <laughs> oh god. <sighs> also, I probably should check my notes from my okay device settings. 
certificates in time so oh, uh, yeah i think the maybe this is the part that is missing the audience do i need to pass along the audience maybe that's why let's let's try adding the audience just in case and then if not we am going to take a look at uh, the notes that um what's his name L uh, louis sent to me audience and i think audience and just give me a second so that i can double check if that's the thing that is named inside my file and i'm going to hide my code for a little bit because i don't want you to see my secrets <laughs> and um oh okay yeah so i shouldn't need the audience right yeah it doesn't make sense to need the audience what am i talking about hmm yes so i just about checked i do not have an audience i should not need an audience uh let's go back to code and not this one this one hmm. where's my mouse found my mouse i was in the other screen never mind Okay, so why is this not working? Where is my... Um, hey Jay, yes, I'm on YouTube, but I'm not streaming on YouTube. What I do is I export the streams to YouTube after the fact, but I am on YouTube and you can do... Well, you're on Twitter, so you're probably not going to be able to do the my my what is the name of the thing? Uh, the streambots command. But if you go to my website, which is jtemporal.com uh, slash socials slash socials, you can find all the links for my socials thing. You no know? Twitter, LinkedIn, Twitch, and that is a YouTube there. Uh, check it out. You know give a follow if you like it um but also probably you can find me and me on youtube by searching by my name you're going to probably find some of my talks before you do find my youtube channel youtube.com and if you go to jessica temporal uh so talk 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 where is my channel somewhere so this is my channel and then you can find there ah look me <laughs> <laughs> thank you thanks for the sub uh oi hi emanuele ciao how you doing uh great to see you here okay let's continue on this thing so i do not want to you know ha make this happen it's... device to begin device flow your application should first request a device code so post your OAuth device code this is the flow that input concerning the device used to access an API, use this endpoint to get the device code. Yes, that's what I was trying to do. The unique identifier of the target API you want to access. I don't have... Maybe that's my problem. I could be mistaken, but maybe that's my problem. I'm going to double check. So, oh, okay, so look at this. Audience and scope are not required. They are optional because this one is required. So the only thing you actually need is the client ID. Yeah, go check out Simon's project. So in for those on Twitch, uh, Simon also works a lot with these kind of devices and he probably works with that more than I do. Um, and he did a, a lot of tracking projects. We have the one, he linked the one on the International Space Station just now. Go check that out. Simon's great. Simon also does live stream from time to time. Um, and you should give him a follow as well. Oh, this broke. Interesting. Can I just, just take a screenshot of this? Response values. Okay, so part of my work is to actually give feedback on things that break. <laughs> so I'm just taking a screenshot so that I can send that to the people from the documentation folks. Maybe they can fix it. 
Remax. You could offline access to the scope request. No, I don't want that. How API using device flow authorization. Let's check that out. Uh, check limitations below. Make sure the authorized flow is suitable for your implementation. So is this, I already did that. Allow web oranges. I don't need that. <laughs> Ensure OIC conformant. Did that as well. Uh, grant types include device code. Done. Includes refresh token. Done. Set up and enable at least one connection to the application database connection, social connections. So where is my application connections? Which one do I have here? I have the database. I have both. Look at that. Co we are covered. Resist your APIs without zero. If you want your API to receive a refresh tokens to allow it to obtain new tokens when the previous one expire, allow offline access. So do I need an API? Is that is that what it is telling me? It kind of makes sense to be honest. Maybe it does. I don't know. I need to double check that because first of all, for the CLI, I know that I do not need an API, but maybe I need to configure the application for whatever I want to do. In my case, would be one of Flask of API thing, um, web applications thing. Maybe we can enable one of those. Yep. Where are my applications? Load, 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 fast API. Can I make this one work? Credentials. I don't want any add on. I was playing around with this the other day, so I don't know if I moved around any of the settings that I needed. Mm. Bear with me, people. I'm trying to figure out my way through this thing. Mm. Brand types. The fresh token, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Request a device code, device flow part. Request a device code that the user can use to authorize the device. That's what I was trying to do. Apparently it's not working. We cannot even get past the first step. Oh, here's the URL I was looking for. Thank you very much. Can I log into my account? Yes. Probably I should log in. Log in. I'm way too. It, it takes forever for me to <laughs> the login to go through, and it kind of annoys me a little bit. <laughs> Logging in. Okay. Where was I? Hmm. It took me back to where I was before. Nope, not this one. Where? Changing. So I have a bunch of tenants. One of them is the Out Zero tenant, the Out Zero ambassadors. The one that I was using is this one. Request. So I don't have an ask hope nor an audience. That's fine. Header. Let's try running this on a. I could probably look at the Python one too. Not Ruby, Python. So client ID, then scope, an audience. So this passes as a payload from the request. All right, blah, blah, blah. And now let's do the sanity check right let's check it out let's see if i can do this url work mm, 
Can I delete this? Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, so this is giving the same error. Interesting. What is wrong? Somebody help me. Let's copy that again. And let's add scopes. What was the scope that I was using? Anybody remember? Open ID profile. All right. Open ID together profile. If I could type, it would be nice. Interesting. Oh, wrong thing. That's why. <laughs> Oh dear, this one is the one that I want. Okay, let's try that again. Never mind, never mind. Oh, I kids, did I copy? Copy, yes. Why can I paste here? Oh, I was typing the wrong thing. Let's erase because scope and audience are both not required. Oh, this works. See? So my guess is this thing is not going through the way it's supposed to go. See? Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. So this is the device code. From what I sent in the request. This is the user code, which is corresponds to my terminal right now. So this is the user code. So this is the one that I would put into the web interface. And this is the link I would access. So let's try accessing this to see. Activate what it looks like. See, and I could put my one time code here, which is that one. Or I could use the URL complete, which would access that directly and take me to the rest of the process already. So you don't have to actually type the code yourself. Okay, fine, so this works. So why is my thing not working? And now that's where so I know that I don't need this, and I also don't need this, but I'm going to leave it there just in case. And now, sorry, I got a notification. I probably should try the script that Luis sent me and open it up to see what is the difference. What, how is he building the request? Because I think that's the only thing that makes sense out of the, all the options that could be why this thing is not working. Um, before I do that, I'm thirsty so i'm going to do a little break grab some water and i'll be right back okay We back, we back. Okay, uh, what is the script Luis sent me? Hmm. Wait, give me a second. Uh, 
I want to open my Slack, but I don't know which window I put it on. So I, I was, I want to make sure that I do not open something that I shouldn't. Okay, I got the script. Let's let's grab it. Okay, 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 okay. Just making sure that the script doesn't have any like um, secrets in it that I cannot show, but I don't think it has, so that should be fine as well. All right, okay, let's go back to here. Let me show you the code again so that you can see it. And I'm going to open that on my terminal. If I can type, that would be nice. So clean it up a little bit and wrong one and this is the one so it's using badger blah 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 using your request and json and um qr code link device code Oop. URL device code. So I don't have that header. Could that be it? I don't think so, but okay. He has an audience. Fine. He's using offline access, which I'm not. So there's also that. Um, encode data. How is you using? So is the difference that you are using the thing with the URL and I'm not? Is that it? Where is the URL request? So this is performing the post request that I'm assuming. Oh, okay. So you're encoding the data. Oh, mm, sneaky. It's, don't tell me that is it. That's why. Don't tell me that is why. Okay, let's go back to the code. So what? what is the difference that he did? So this should not be a JSON dump. Should be in the format like this so the url should be something like blah 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 code and then client id and equals whatever the client id is and then scope equals whatever the scope is and i think that's the difference the biggest difference from what he's like what I'm doing from what he's trying to do. So now what we are going to do is comment these things out. And we are going to do the same thing he did just to see if it works, you know, double checking. Uh, people having conversations in chat. <laughs> okay. Yeah, definitely check out, um, the content from Simon, it, it is top notch. Trust me. Simon, by the way, uh, which is a dear friend. I can tell you, I can call you a dear friend right now. I think Simon, we talk a lot. Um, and also will help me review and give some feedback to the Badger lab, which I'm going to drop in chats again soonish. As soon as I can um, look at this thing and make it work. <laughs> and but the idea like what was the thing simon reviewed the content uh and gave some feedback and just so you know y'all give me feedback you know i like it uh, so he's encoding the data how he's just like 
putting things together, right? Yes. Okay. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is, so this is the payload. It's not going to be a payload. I'm going to do with a, can I do F strings here? I probably can, right? Um, device code data is going to be an F string of interrogation point I could do client ID equals something scope equals something I could do a list comprehension there with this dictionary but I'm not going to because reasons and I'm going to just copy this I'm going to make this dirty and then I can make it pretty okay Bear with me. Change the quotes. And I need this to be inside of a curly bracket. So it evaluates. Do I have F strings in MicroPython? Does anybody know? Simon, you probably know this. Do we have what is the name? F strings in here? I'm struggling. My keyboard is going crazy. Stop it. Okay. Tony, where is my OBS? Here. Can I do? And then. Yes. Oh, thank God. So this works, even though it doesn't like. Does it have like syntax highlighted difference, difference CH, difference CH? Oh my God. Making it a difference because it is a variable, not like a string per se. And I'm not going to add scope. I'm going to leave this like this. And I'm going to use this for my response and device code response. Equals new requests the post. Dear Lord, what did I do? Oh, oh. <laughs> it's showing me that I was closing a parenthesis that doesn't exist. Okay, that's fine. Sorry, got distracted. Didn't know what's going on. Um, and then I want this. as well and comma data without dumping as a json without dumping it as a json object because it's going to be part of the url instead of okay Let, let's double check what we just did so I created a string containing the client ID to pass along within the URL and I'm passing this as data. Let's see if this works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this on the shell first, just cause. Error and mutation error. The my fault, sorry, 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 sorry. Let's go again. And now this. In device code data, just to double check. Okay, perfect. And now let's try to do this request. Fingers crossed. Error. What? I never seen this before in my life. Error twelve. What? What? What did I do? Oh dear lord. This shouldn't be this hard, come on. Uh, 
I'm just double checking everything. I don't I don't trust myself at this moment. Yeah, see? Something went wrong there. What the heck? In line three, error number 12, OS error. Why is this so hard? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to save this just in case. And can I try to run it? Object with buffer protocol required. What? Line sixty fifty six. Okay. Let's take a look at the code again that Luis did. Maybe I forgot something. So he encoded the data with the join and then post headers that encode the data. It tries and if it doesn't work there's a bunch of checks failed and the status codes with the fail finally close okay okay you know what i can do i could totally totally copy this thing and run it to see if it works right Oh my god, it's already 11 and 11 and <laughs> I have done nothing. I have not managed to make the request to get the code and I'm very upset about it. I want to see what this is doing. Hmm. Yes, he is suffering. Ooh. Because I think this is doing nothing but encoded data yes like i said oh it's joining with the knee okay blah 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 fine so if i did whatever this is and do my request with it what does ha does what happens I'm starting to think that his his code might work, and we are having two different uh, we have two different versions of MicroPython because it makes no sense to be different. Yeah, I know. What is his URL? Oh, uh, device code, same as mine. Well, ish. So this is the URL, okay. Let's simplify everything, okay? Let's let's try to simplify everything. Let's do this and let's do URL, URL, right? It's the same URL, okay. 
and then I don't have the header so there is also that let's try to pass this along as well just in case and let's see if it works you know we have time I have time do you have time how are y'all doing over there is this making any sense to anybody and maybe anybody has any reason why it's not working I would love to hear did I use it correct um Coded data. Scope client ID. Where's my my request part? Okay, here. I'm going to copy this and make it different. I'm going to do URL and then oops I'm going to create the object headers here oops headers it's already there and then I'm going to do headers equal Headers. Is it plural or is it singular? Yes, plural. Headers, headers. Very creative. And then data. We're going to do what we just did before, which is the client ID, whatever, whatever name. device what is the name of my variable again device code payload code data so maybe without the inter Question mark interrogation thing in here. Device code data. Um, now I think there's something wrong with the name that I used. No, client ID is right, it's underlined, everything in little letters. Okay non-capitalized copy this and do device code data now let's try run this It worked. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Device. It didn't break, which is a good a good thing. What is the status code though? It worked. It was the headers. The thing that was missing was the headers. Oh, oh crying out loud. Dear. Oh dear. It's never it never is the thing that you think it is. Okay. <laughs> Today we learned something. You need the headers for your request and this thing does not add headers by itself Which it is not surprising to be honest. It, this is a pr me problem. I'm the problem Like the Taylor Swift song. It's me. I'm the problem is me response and text And now we get it device code which is this this device which is different from the one on my terminal and the user code, which is great. I don't need this panel. And then the verification URI. Victory. Uh, what a good way to finish the stream. A little bit over time, but we did it. We did it. Very proud. 
it, it worked. Now let's clean this up before we can close the stream. Now we know that we need the headers. So we learned something new today. Yay! Yay us. Um, well, two things new. Uh, first, we do not need to dump it as a JSON. We don't pass this as the body of the application. We pass this in part of the URL. For some reason, I didn't know that. Now we learned. Um, okay. I just realized that this is actually not a question mark. It is a thing here. Okay. Let's remove this. Let's remove this part because we know that's wrong. And this also, we do not need this. Well, I could leave it there and I could do like the, the, what is the name? Oh my God. Forgot the name. I'm forgetting the names of everything. This this is a sign that I'm very tired. I oh yeah, you know, I think it has been a long time <laughs> that I had messed up Heather so badly like this. Um and also for some reason I guess when you do the requests on Python from your terminal, maybe it adds the headers because requests at, like the, the request module might add the headers for you. I, that's what I think it is happening. And this thing does not. So you'll probably need to actually add it. So we learned something new. Look at that. I'm very excited that this is working now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to add the scope here, even though we don't necessarily need it. Um, just cause, you know, it's going to be a long, long string, but then I can make it pretty later. Scope equals whatever this scope on open edge profile is open a deep profile okay victory what a great way my fight is already going great so i don't need this we do need the headers uh now we can i have this here Yes, I have this here. So this is the wrong one. This is the right one. Okay. And we don't need this. And we don't need this comment anymore. Okay. So I don't need this data as well. <laughs> Jessica is no longer suffering. Victory. And... Okay, device code successful, blah, 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 print. And this is the print is showing on the terminal, not like on the shell, not on the badge. So I guess for next week, we can run this again. We can update the badge display. Can I do the, the badge display very fast? Let's try. Let's see how long it takes. So it's 11.22, my time right now. Um, draw page. That's the one that I want. What is the depth of this one? Okay. So I'm I'm copy pasting and I know things will break in the display because of how long the things are. But I want to see it. Draw page. Now I'm going to put this up top here and display tax is going to be whatever this is I'm going to show just their user code okay so just this little thing here and the message is something like user code user code received and then code and I want can I do device code data user code blah 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 let's see if this works let's run it eh, something broke of course it did mm -hmm. what is the URL part this one oh I forgot oh lord Okay, well, uh, URL equals format. 
and I want OAuth. What was the endpoint again? Uh, something code. It was OAuth code. Why was it a different one? I don't remember anymore. OAuth device code. I knew I was something missing. Device code, and I'm going to format this with um, the domain that I have somewhere in here. Out zero request data domain. Request data. And I know I'm getting what is the quote unquote situation all mixed up and I apologize in advance and I'm not going to fix it up. Format, blah, blah, blah. Can I just be sneaky and add the, <laughs> uh, no, I don't need to add that here, right? I just need this. Yeah. Let's try again. Domain. Yes. It's not, it's domain not capitalized unsupported protocol what oh the let's go again well you're going together so something's happening because nothing is breaking in here i just don't know what yeah so it kind of worked display isn't defined oh i forgot to import the things yes i did <laughs> Yee -hoo. Oh dear. So badger. So for the display part, for those that don't know, we need to use the display thing. Do I define display somewhere? I don't remember anymore. I don't think I need to, but I I really don't remember. It has been a while since I did any of the code for the badger itself. Let's try again. Yeah, display is not there. I need to create a display. Yes, here we are. Do I need this part? I don't know. I'm going to copy it up just in case I can try and remove it later. Clean it up a little bit more. Um, I didn't import the other library, did I? No. Oh, somebody mentioned me on Twitter. What happened? Okay. Oh. See, that's how you learn. There is a lot of things that you do not remember. So, you are ill, badger. What is my width definition? I'm trying to find where I said like with it equals something something. Should I do this instead? Equal. No, is equal. No. Where 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 are you? Found it. Of course. I should have just do like badger, you know. Let me fix this import order. It was bugging me. Let's try again. Device code data isn't defined, but I did define it. No, I thought I did at least. <laughs> Let's try to figure out. Uh, device code data is here. Device code data. Why isn't? What? 109 oh I see this is okay I'm going to device code response as a JSON I'm going to call it data just for the sake of my sanity seven minutes seven minutes in we, we can do it before Oh, can we? I don't know. I'm 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 hopeful. 
This is the word for today. Hopeful. Fingers crossed. Where again? Uh, what? Data. Device code data. Find. Oh, this one. Okay, so these are the only two that should exist anyways. Let's go. Name data isn't defined. Oh, yes, because I'm not returning anywhere, right? That's my problem. Mm -hmm. Data. And I'm going to do a return here. And I'm going to call everything the same thing. And please bear with me. And data. That's interesting. I guess it's because we're the. It worked! Look! <laughs> User code received! Only took what eight minutes? Yay! Well, technically nine ish, eight something. I'm going to click the link. Click the link. Um, I click the link and it opened my other browser that you all cannot see. And I can confirm. Look, I can see up here and I can see in my browser. I'm very happy. <laughs> Sorry, uh, you had to see that. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> I'm very excited. Uh, let's confirm this. Let's see what the flow looks like at the end. So confirm and then I can log in and I can continue with Google probably. Uh, you are all set, your device is not connected. And then, so this will inform R0 that the authentication happened and the authorization as well and everything worked. And then I can show something new on the badge. So I'm going to leave that for next week, you know, tune in again for next week to see how that part goes. <laughs> and then I'm hopeful that next week we can do that and connect use of a uh, web app application, either fast API or Flask, I don't know yet, uh, to show some uh, information from the badge. But yay, victory. Okay, thank you all for joining. I hope you had fun. I, I know I was stressed a little bit, but I had fun in the end, which is always great. Uh, we managed to make things work. We understood that you need headers as well when you do, when you do your requests, because especially from the badge, Tony does not up, uh, add the headers by itself. Uh, we also learned um, it's important to remember to import the libraries that you need to use, especially the ones to draw on the, the badge a screen, but it worked. Now, uh, next steps, we need to, after the user continues the login process, it needs to refresh the page, show some information from the user to make, to, so the user can know that the login happened. The other thing we need to do uh, that I want to do is actually to update some user metadata from the out zero dashboard. And I also want when it shows the, the code to show a QR code or the link for people to continue, uh, the progress within their browse, uh, within their phone or something like that. But good news. It worked. Yay. Only took like maybe three hours the first one and a half from last year, three months ago. And this one you have, <laughs> who knew? <laughs> the bugging is always fun when it works. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> but anyways, thank you everybody for joining. See you again next week. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend.